North Otago is a notoriously dry region, and local farmers have been working for a long time to combat that. The North Otago Irrigation Scheme was established in 2006. It now delivers water from the Waitaki River to about 100 shareholders over 10,000 hectares of farmland. The company set up to run the scheme won the 2012 Irrigation New Zealand Innovation Award for their environmental management program. This scheme was commissioned in 2006, but there were a number of shareholders and local farmers that worked on developing the scheme and getting the consents and dreamed about having a scheme for many years before that. A group of them got together and they said, after the drought in the 90s, and they said, where are we going to get water? And the only place they could feasibly see that they could get water was from the Waitaki River. And that meant that they had to build infrastructure to take it from the river and up onto the plateau and into the Wairika Valley. We're a little bit unique in our scheme because we straddle two regions. Our take of water is under ECAN and our use of water is under Otago Regional Council. And so we work with both regional authorities and of course both of those are looking at how they're going to manage the national policy statement around water quality. And so we talk to both of them about how our irrigation scheme fits under what they're proposing. It is a one price, one maximum price for all scheme. So it's 100% um, farmer owned and farmer funded, although there were partners that were um, involved initially to help them get off the ground. So each of our shareholders, and we have 100 shareholders, um, make a cash investment up front. Um, that gives them a shareholding. And then there's a number of charges that they pay on an ongoing basis. What they're paying for is the infrastructure that delivers water to their property. So we have to fund significant pumps and pipes in the ground and then we have to fund the ongoing operational costs associated with that infrastructure. The initial scheme cost about $58 million and then there was also a $10 million investment by the District Council in the form of a loan to the company that funded overbuild of the initial infrastructure for stage two of the scheme or for the next 10,000 hectares that could come on. Originally, North Otago was characterised by smaller sheep properties. What we found after four years is that we'd had a significant land use change. We'd gone from about 60% sheep to 60% dairy, 9% dairy support, but we still had 30% beef, sheep, deer, and we also have within that about 12% arable. The big challenge to the scheme is ensuring that as we intensify the land that we do put measures in place to make sure that we manage any impacts that could be brought through that intensification, particularly on water quality. And the key tool that we have to do that is our environmental farm plans that all of our shareholders have to have for their properties. So the North Otago Irrigation Company takes its water off the Waitaki River. It's got an intake at what we call Borton's Pond which is actually a department and conservation area um, below the hydroelectric dams, which are up here. And then we take our water um, from the intake infrastructure across to a fish screen, and then we go into our canal system over here. And then we go to our first pump station. In that pump station, we have two very large pumps that push a maximum of 4,000 litres per second up 80 metres to a plateau where we have another small canal system which goes to a second pump station which pushes the water again up about another 70 metres to a head pond which is at the highest point of our scheme. And then we gravity flow into the Wairika Valley from there. So the um, original infrastructure that was commissioned in 2006 delivers 4,000 litres per second of water to our shareholders. All of our scheme is a piped and pressurised scheme as opposed to a border dike scheme. It's pressurised to about 50 metres or 75 psi and the farmer receives the water at their farm under pressure and then they can simply hook up their infrastructure to our water. We have consent for eight QMEX of water. We're currently using four QMEX. So it was always contemplated that there was going to be an expansion of the scheme. The first stage of the scheme was in 2006, and then that was going, closely going to be followed by the next um, expansion of the scheme. 46 here, look at it. 
the depth of body, good strong head on him. Yeah. Yeah. We have about 80 hectares here. It's a flat top with fairly steep sides. We have a, a larger, fairly steep, dry block, hill block, and that's about 20 k's away from here. On this farm, we run several enterprises. We've got a, an Angus stud. We've got a Charolais bull stud as well. We have an annual sale. So we sell our bulls at two-year-old to commercial beef breeders, mainly throughout the South Island. We also run, with my other business, an embryo transplant company. So we run this property as a donor facility. We run recipients here for various clients. And we also have an embryo export centre. So the very small property, now that it's irrigated, we are generating quite a big turnover off it. We always wanted to move to an area that we could find that we would sell our bulls well. We liked the thought of the area here being nice and dry and, and a good testing place for our cows. And then we heard about the potential for water on part of it, so you know that kind of made the full package really. We were one of the earlier ones with sheep and beef. They sold quite a lot of water early on to dairy farmers, of course, because the uh, the payout was good, those guys um, had good regular incomes. Um, we just needed some security of feed and in the 2008-09 drought, which was just before we took it on, we really got short of feed and we ended up buying in a large amount of feed that year and really that was the catalyst for wanting to irrigate so we could become self-sufficient. The shares in the company enable you to take about an inch of water a week um, most years that's way more than what we would require. So we were able to put infrastructure in, so it's the underground pipes and the pods to do about 55 hectares. So we bought 32 shares or 32 hectares worth of shares and we basically spread that water further. To buy the shares and to put the infrastructure in was about 400,000 for our very small farm here. It was complementary to the other farm our other property is about 500 hectares, so it was, it's watering a small part of a much bigger enterprise, really. Probably the most important thing is, and it's difficult to put a financial cost on it, but it's peace of mind. It really is, and, and, and that's what um, I personally and probably Rose have got out of this, is just being able to sleep at night because you know that you've got feed ahead of, of the stock. You're not being compromised by watching for rain. We did an economic benefit study in 2010 to see what the impact of the scheme had been. And we found that the farmers had generated three times as much revenue from their property as they did before irrigation. We also found that there was $15 million a year of value add that was created from this scheme. There were 76 jobs directly added because of the scheme. We also found that um, there was $68 million that had been invested on farm in additional infrastructure as well as the $58 million that was invested off farm for our infrastructure. <coughs>